you're going to need to mute the local speaker just to make sure I don't end up with too much what you call that feedback echo, I guess, right? Something like that. So here we are. We're we're at a point in the school year where we're actually I'm sharing with you my to-do list. So let me kind of highlight here where I'm at. This is called shared notes. And so just above where this book hold points, you can see it says shared notes. What I want you to understand is that that's something different than going to public chat. I haven't used that in the past very much, so I want you to, as highlighted here, look in the shared note area and see today's agenda. All right, uh, once we go to shared notes, let's start at the top and go all the way down. First thing I want to talk about is I'm, I'm offering for everybody the opportunity to do a card project as one of your activities as a spontaneous thing. Um, what I wanted to highlight is we're in season one. There's a lot of celebrations going on. In particular, there's some friends for your, yourself that are graduating. Uh, there's a number of honorary days for parents like Mother's Day and Father's Day that are, are happening. And there's a uh, reasons where you might want to do either a congratulations card or you might want to give somebody a, a birthday card or something like that. Microsoft Publisher. So Microsoft Publisher is part of the Office Suite. And it is... This is Microsoft Publisher. We'll make this a little bit more digestible. So the application level at the start here, Microsoft Publisher, is built into your machines. And it's going to follow a lot of the same standards with a menu across the top and standard operations like Control-C to copy and Control-V to paste, etc. So when you start Microsoft Publisher, when you tell it what type of document you're going to create, there's a number of templates here. And some of these are cards. So if you, if you wanted to put together a simple thing like a thank you card, I'm going to use that as an example to show you the the, the layout here. So here's a thank you card. This one prints two per sheet and it just folds in half and you can personalize it with your own message so that you know you've got a thank you note you can write on. That's pretty simple. So let's take a look at one that's more of a traditional greeting card. So I'm going to click on the word new again. But in templates you can also put in things like um, congratulations Card for it. There's a there's a ceremony invitation. It could be useful for some of you that are seniors. Uh, you can make this a gift if you want to. You can, you can remember your your content creators now. You look for cards. Uh, there's a birthday card. Click on the word create here. This is a more interesting template because you end up with multiple pages printing that you're then going to fold. So this is what I wanted to show you is this one I think is just a flyer. I'm looking for one that actually is a greeting card because the first time you look at one of these, it's a little bit of a mind twist. Some of the text is upside down, but it prints out good. Thank you cards, thank you cards, photo album. I should have practiced this right before I reached out to you guys with this. I have to, I'll have to clean some of this up on uh, in post because this is a long delay here. There we go. Birthday party invitations. Party invitation outside. Want the foldable one down text on it. This one will be a good example. So here you can have a note on the inside, and you've also got a way to put your note on the back. So I just wanted to encourage you if you're interested in making a, a thank you card, a graduation card, Mother's Day card, birthday card, you can use Microsoft Publisher to have access to it through the lab. Um, save it to a drive you could get to, and then you can print it at home or use it as an electronic version, but you can customize it with the font to use it. So that's that's because there is only a majority of students have already reached their date. And that's good because people are running out of time. Not everybody at the same time, but the end of the year is upon us for some people. We're at a point where they're going to do a checkout. And 
And I don't mean that they're going to mentally check out. I mean that they're going to go through a process to highlight that they've they've completed their work here. So let's see. I really got the wrong camera at the wrong angle, considering I'm looking at something that's going to go on a different media rather than just a recorded image. So, whoa, is that ever a trippy angle for you now, huh? I'm just going to grab the camera off the screen. It's like a Godzilla movie right now, huh? Any, has anybody seen that? Is that any good? Alright, so bottom <laughs> lizard fan. The other ones I was looking at. So here we are in the first session. My understanding is like today's Friday. There's a few people that are out in the calendar conflicts edge of my camera here to point out what's going on and then as we go through next Monday through Friday um, we will actually have I'm expecting some people to be here in person uh, I'll update that a little bit with some new information that just came to light that's what the yellow means these people have let me know they plan on being here but then when you get to the black boxes that indicates that's the class and you'll see that we've got something here if I, if I take a look in here this this one that looks like it's all weird it's called the mandatory checkout with optional check-in. So this is what I need students to do to indicate that you're done with your checkout. This can be done any day up until, until the 25th. The only reason I'm going through it is there may be students who aren't in attendance today, you know, conflicts, or may want to review this information, so I'm going through it. You're going to max at 100%. No one's going to get 115% or anything like that. So if you hit 100% on or last, on, on or before your last day, anything that's out there, we can just put a check mark in indicating you're done. You've, you've reached the goal grade of, of 100%. A is the highest grade you can get at the college level. So we're not going to take it any higher than that. All right, here's the comments in here. So you, I don't want you to check out unless you actually have reached 100%. It doesn't mean that, well, I only need to pass this class to graduate, and I'm happy enough with a D, so I'm done with a D. That's not when you check out. The check out means you hit 100%. And that's true of some students in this session already, so it's important for them to understand that in order for them to focus on things like AP exams and not worry about, you know, if they have finals in other classes and not worry about this class, the final... Capstone project is your portfolio. And the portfolio is more open-ended this year based on time availability and pacing with the COVID than it has been in the past. So the last time I'll, we're probably going to be putting actual grades in the system would be around the 19th. Doesn't mean that I'm turning the lab off and you can continue to access the lab. Now I had a student tell me yesterday that they have to turn their Chromebook in on Monday meaning that after Monday, they won't have access to my lab remotely using the Chromebook. In-person attendance is still an option up to the 25th. Make sure you use an assignment sheet and let me know what's going on with that. Once you've graduated, you're no longer a high school student. I can't let you back in the building. It's just a technicality. You're a graduate now. You're an alumni. So you won't be coming in for a visit unless you arrange for something. I like seeing former students generally, but it needs to be scheduled. So, I'm so honest to it. This is the video I'm making right now, what it means to check out. So, if you borrowed any equipment from me, it needs to get returned. I should have already talked to the students that applies to. Payment of fees is, is true. If, if you had uh, participated in an optional activity, I don't have a fee for my program area, so that's, again, I'll handle that with people individually. Verification of grade. This is something that you should be doing now. You should be, not be surprised at what your grade is. If you're not sure how to do that, let me go through that briefly. This is how to check your grade. You're going to go to the Tech Campus website here. Check out bookmarked in the lab it is. And under student parents, you're going to find the link that says link to Power School. That's where your grades come from. So it says parent portal right here. This is the one. This is the one that the students can use as well, and it will get you this, get you into a view where you can check your grades. Mine's a little bit different from that link. 
I'm going to go back to the home page again and show you that not only do you, could you get to it that way by going under student parents, but if you scroll down on this page, you're going to see that there's a link over here just below where my, my camera view is called Power School, and that's where you would get in to verify your grade. So no one should be surprised by their grade. They should be, they should be okay with, with where their grade is and how to, how to check their grade. Just below that is the email, and I wanted to highlight the email for checkouts because students need to be able to uh, check their email. Is everything okay? Mr. Abney, are you okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm recording right now, and I'm live, so if it's not real urgent, I'll have to talk to you guys a little bit later. So let's get back to my list here and make sure I go through the checkout list with you. I just mentioned checking your grade. I just mentioned doing the email. And there is a survey via Google Forms link. I've got to verify that's the proper link for you. That'll happen right after this report. Here's the next thing I want to make sure you really make sure you understand is anything that's on your student drives is going to go away at some point. If you're a current junior returning to the fall, I'd like to think that you'll continue to have access to that drive, but I can't guarantee it because I'm not in charge of what's on the drive. We certainly don't want people to leave large files that are sitting idle. And so if you have taken into uh, downloading some content packs that are large, some of them are very large, and some of you have grabbed a lot of content, chances are your drive is going to get wiped right after you're done with your class. And if I haven't talked to you already about saving space, then we've gotten by pretty good this year because usually it gets, becomes an issue and we have to clean that up. And what that means is anything on your H drive, and everyone's H drive is their own, I'm going to, just for conversation's sake, I'm going to bring up a view that shows all of the H drives for the students here. So based on your ID number, I have a view of every student drive here, and I can open one up and see what's in there. Um, I clicked on the word size here. I can see that there's fairly you know, that's, that, that's, that's quote unquote a larger file in this area. And I'm guessing that this is probably Mr. One of my, no, this is one of my students. There's an Unreal folder. Here we go. Uh, don't know who this is, but. There we go, Foster Intro Project. So I'm thinking that's a student whose first name is Foster that I have. And you can click on Date Modified. You can see the last time he updated something in for my class was on maybe possibly hasn't updated anything since 23. I guess that's possible, but he hasn't. So you can click on it by Date Modified. You can click on it by size figure out if there's something you want, you need to put it somewhere that you can keep it long term. That might mean you download it to your home. It might mean you move it to a Google Drive, but the Google Drive connected with your Tech Campus account is also going to be going away. Uh, another way to say work would be on your OneDrive, that's also going to go away. So for most of you, you've gone through the process and you have set yourself up to be College of Lake County. And here's a trick for you. And I have to jump into a different browser here in this demo because at the College of Lake County, my ID is the same, but my password is different. So when I go to the CLC website here, and this will look very similar to you. You'll notice over here where it says my CLC and there's a login. You can then log into your account. And if you don't have your ID password combo set up with CLC, that's a CLC matter, and I won't be able to help you out with that because I don't work for CLC. I work for Tech Campus, and we coordinate with CLC. So not all of my students have this option because they haven't applied to CLC, but if you apply to it, and if you've been accepted at it, and you set up your email, you have access to things over here that are under a link that says Office 365 email. And when you go in here, now I haven't set up my two-part authentication on this yet, so it's not going to actually open it just kind of show you what that looks like. There's an additional step that they've added here, which is going to ask you to um, you know, verify who you are and type in your password. And then they got this new thing that says, you know, you got to make sure you do your verification, which is part of authentication. And then I get a message on my phone.
so that you can do that to a mobile phone and then type in code, or you can do it to a desk phone. And students, the one CLC would look almost the same. And along the side here, you're going to see a number of the icons to get into these different areas. And the one right there is called the OneDrive. Oops, move your finger up, Mr. Judge, and then over. The OneDrive. And if you were to look at the OneDrive, this is on the cloud, and you've got a number of uh, areas where you can save things in folders. So this is the OneDrive at Tech Campus. I also have a OneDrive at CLC. And if I was a student with things on my H drive, I would connect to my OneDrive at CLC and move things there. Or I would put them on my personal Google Drive, but not the Tech Campus one because that one's going away. This is important for you to understand because I don't want you to lose the work you've been doing. You still have access to the game engine. As long as your Tech Campus credentials are, are working, and I don't know when that goes away, you can continue to use Office and uh, the Adobe products is Creative Cloud account, as well as the Autodesk products, using your credentials with your Google login. But that's got an expiration data. So you want to transition yourself as a senior into using college credentials, which would then let you do a lot of the same things. And I, I can't say it's going to give you creative cloud or not. I, again, I don't work for CLC, but that is just an illustrative example of what you're going to lose uh, in terms of opportunities when you're no longer a student here. Some of the stuff that you gained in the fall is going to be transitioned off. So let's keep myself honest here on what else I'm going through here. We did Okay, so making sure you check your email I talked about, surveys come in. This is the thing is cleaning up your H drive. Um, follow up on grades to CLC. I want to mention to you that yes, if you're dual enrolled and you are getting college credits, you won't be ever touching base with Tech Campus on those grades. That's going to go over to CLC again. I don't work there, but that's where you'll get your actual CLC grade, which is different than your Tech Campus grade. There's the high school grade, which is one matter, and then there's the college grade, which is another. And if you have questions about that, ask now, because what it, what's, what's awkward is, you know, some number of years in the future, somebody reaches out and says, hey, I took your class back in blah, blah, blah year, and I'm trying to figure out my CLC credits. Uh, my records um, are not necessarily, for CLC, are not kept beyond uh, a certain period, and they're not necessarily complete enough to answer all the questions that come up. So the point here is take it with you. Take your credits with you, take your data with you, that's your stuff, and make sure you move it where you can keep track of it. Okay. Uh, seniors, you've got an email from the school, I haven't seen it yet, that invites you to do a, a survey, so please attend to that. Award recipients, I did send you an email as well, to your Tech Campus email with a link for you to provide an, uh, a, a photograph for the awards ceremony, which is a video pre-recorded presentation that will be posted with a link. And you'll be able to fast forward until you see me, hit play, you'll hear your name said, and ideally a picture will come up. And, uh, and then you'll be able to share that however you see fit with your family, and it'll, it'll be up there forevermore. Now, there's some things that are local that I just want to mention are going to be happening. You might see me starting to work in the physical room on my cleanup as well, as we're at that point. So I will be uh, cleaning the windows, putting away some signs, and doing some paperwork, uh, shredding things that are no longer needed. Um, it's weird because the tech campus year starts at a different pace. Not all the schools are here at the same time. And it ends at a different pace for everybody. So it's not the grand opening with the last day. It's, it's just that way at Tech. And so uh, instead of one day of goodbyes, I go through one for every student, basically. To manage that, I suggest as soon as possible, you get yourself to the 100%. You let me know that you're good, you're checked out, and you're going to continue to do your own independent study. Practice what you're going to be doing beyond the class practice accessing the tools from, from home or not using the lab. Take your data, make sure you've got everything set and continue to work with me for the next week or two. Or if you're still working on getting to your 100%, make sure you're reaching out to me. 
that we're talking, do you understand what you can do to raise your grade? Because I'm a coach, I'm not a goalie. It's not that a curve grade on a curve. You saw how many A's there are. If you do the work, you get the credit, but you burn your grade, I don't give them to you. And if there's a question about where your grade is at, that's an individual conversation. And I would invite you to open a private chat, send me an email, we'll look at the data, and I'll make adjustments as needed. As recently as Wednesday, I, I, I uncovered that somebody was turning work in after the traditional due date without letting me know. And so they missed getting credit for some things, but I happened to catch it. Now I could catch it, you could catch it, and uh, whoever does, let's just have a conversation about it and make sure that the credit is given where credit is due. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. This is this is kind of just summary. Now I'm going to go through the points I went through. Beginning, I talked about how you could, if you want to, make a card. That's using Microsoft Publisher. It's optional. Grades are updated. All right, so showing some examples of students' portfolios. I would like to take a minute to do that. I've got a couple of things, not as, as criticisms, but as suggestions, just to make sure people know the flow of how to get your presentation into um, a, a video. And, and so this is something that I talked about a couple of times, and I want to make sure people understand. You could use Google Slides, or you could use PowerPoint. So PowerPoint has, a, has an advantage. So let me show you that briefly. I'm just going to open up a PowerPoint slide just to kind of show you. i show you the option on taking a slideshow and turn it into a video. Up in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to click on the word file. And then we're going to find the word export. When I click on export, it says create a video. A couple of things that you can do to make your video look more interesting. Check on what size. And if you're doing a draft version, then you could just do standard size for now until you're happy with it. And then this next one, you can either say don't use recorded timings and set it as standard timing. So let me do that for now. I'm going to go down to uh, 0.75 seconds just to, to create my video so that it goes quickly. So this is going to be smallest resolution, quickest time, so that this just kind of clicks on volume. If I click on the word create video, it wants to know where to share it, or save it, I should say. And I'm going to put this on the game programming drive as a demo, just so you guys can see it. Copy of up your, up, up your Google Slides game. Interesting. Really weird name for something. I'm going to click on save. Now, in the, now this is the thing that could take a really long time just below just below here, the progress meter. If you have videos embedded in there, this thing could take an hour to render out. Just, just saying. Um, people tend to be comfortable in Google, Google Slides. People tend to be comfortable in PowerPoint, one or the other or both. And it's a feature that lets you get to a video that you can then look at or post on social media. So this will be a very simple example on the game programming drive I just created. It's going to be relatively small, and it's going to be very quick. just wanted to make sure I did a demo of those steps. So this is less than a second each on each of these slides. <laughs> Excuse me, the total length here is 36 seconds. It's, it's really too fast for somebody to process. But if these are just images that are coming up from your work, that's not bad at all. Transitions, sound effects, those things can be included within PowerPoint. All right. What this ends up looking like is when students make their make their videos this way and they incorporate both has been demonstrated from past years on the uh, tech, I'm sorry on my personal YouTube site. It's only a minute and fifty six seconds, so let's take a quick look at this. I'm gonna maximize it. You're not gonna hear any video, but this is just a student from a past year who had you know, variety of renderings. This is done in PowerPoint and then rendered out as a movie. So any of the images that were brought in were in PowerPoint and now it becomes a video based on that same process just demonstrated. Slide transitions become video transitions and it's probably the most straightforward way for you to take images and content and turn that into something that you can use as a video. You should 
put things in here that you're most proud of. You should put in things that show a variety of your skills that show that you have transitioned into um, a, a greater finale. Maybe you didn't have that to show that you've transitioned and become a greater finale. Some of this is going to look very familiar to you because you've done most of these projects. And so everybody should have some examples that should include their name and or a logo in them and show that they've done some work. Somebody who doesn't know the Unreal Engine, this is just going to look like gibberish. If they do know the Unreal Engine, they're going to understand that you've done some blueprinting work. There was an earlier example of C++. And this is the gap I've got from this year. We didn't do a group of games. So group games are something where a variety of people collaborated on it. You can see there's a heads-up display on here. Sorry, you can't see it. You don't think I'm showing my PowerPoint? Well, thank you for letting me know. I'm glad somebody's letting me know that I didn't do that. Okay. Luckily, luckily, what I'm going to be pointing out, uh, pushing out to YouTube, will have this content, and it will make more sense there. So I did not realize that it was not sharing my screen here. Fortunately, somebody did just point that out to me so I can jump back in and, uh, and make that adjustment there. Sorry about that, students who are online and remote. I did not realize that. So let me share my screen again. This will be recorded again, like I said, up to the YouTube site for you to check out later. So let's take a look at, an, at a sample or two that was turned in this year because these, these are going to be different from last year. They don't have a group project. So I'm going to jump on the calendar, and here's, um, let's just take a look at highlight real submissions. Um, so this would be an option where a student has decided that this is something I might want to consider putting in my highlight reel. And so this, this is something I've got as a student submission. There's the student name. This looks a little bit like on the stencil, but we made our way almost to a roof area, almost like there's going to be a helicopter here. Predominant in there. So it could be that you turn something into um, the submission for the highlight reel, as these are. Uh, I will work on trimming many of these things down so that I just get a few samples. And it's great if student names are in there because as I show these things off, as a, as a collective set of highlights. It's nice to show off student work and show a variety of students have, have worked through. So, let's see here. This was an optional thing, so it's not that everybody should have turned it in. Uh, a variety of, of them. Like, I would be looking, for example, for somebody that maybe has landscaping done this year, and they maybe include some of those. Uh, tower maze. So, chess pieces, army compound, battle. Oh, what's this image? It takes a while for me to go through these, so that's why I usually ask for them on May the 5th. So we see that the, the player is holding a flashlight. Flashlight's been turned on and off. So we got some totally dark areas, but the flashlight's effective at re-illuminating them. The door, they either had no collision data on it or animated so fast that you couldn't quite catch that. So they've set the tone here. I'm just gonna rotate through. Oh, so they got some AI that's involved chase mode. Is that a giant object on the right? I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Nonetheless, highlight reel submissions can be individual like this or the portfolio itself. The portfolio itself, I'm going to continue to move that date out because I'll take it any day. So this is where I'm going to take the Turn in your portfolio in the first half of class, which some people, they turn it in, they get credit, they, uh, they up, and then they'll, up, they'll unsubmit it and update it with more content. So if somebody's turned in something, uh, they're not necessarily, this isn't necessarily their final one. And let's just run another students from here. So this is, uh, have the student name and logo. And a hug. There's a 
pulse bar I see already. I think we've got enough to close the screens. There's some construction in here that clearly uses DSPs. Some static meshes, student name is there. There's no message that says lighting needs to be rebuilt. That's, that's tight, that's good. There's not a lot of extra information on the screen. Um, you know what? There's, there's a moving platform. That's, a, that's one of our blue card operations there. There are some elements from, looks like from the statue game there. So without a narrative, it, it might be that this would benefit from a little bit of, because you've got the black box around the edges. If you wanted to highlight with text down here, you could highlight what this particular feature is at different times. And to add features like that, we start to get into use of something called Adobe Premiere Pro. So nice door. Everybody watching this has got an appreciation for the fact that, that, that getting a door program does take a little bit of work. It's got a landing at the bottom and top of the stairs. It's got no handrail, so you know it's a very dangerous building for, for children, I'm sure. But no, I'm just kidding. This is fun. The door works both ways. Very cool. And as I as I mentioned, this student can continue to work on this and improve it if they want to. Highlight what you believe is your strengths. Don't worry about some of the biographical information in the past. People used to say things like, I have a job at Taco Bell. That's great information for the resume because you're a high school student with experience, but it's not necessarily something that you want in your professional portfolio. So if you want to say a little bit about yourself, you might want to say some of those things that are probably going to help lift your job experience. Like, I worked in high school, or I really enjoy science fiction, especially if it shows in your work. Or um, I'm, I'm a huge, like, you know, old school 16-bit, uh, he said, you know, Minecraft guy. It would help explain, like, why your portfolio has a certain theme to it. So everybody's portfolio is their, their own. I give you guidance on what to include, but really it's your work. And I can give you some feedback, I can give you some suggestions, but it's your work and I want you to be happy with it. In fact, I want you to be happy about what you're doing at this point in the curriculum. And that is why we, we use this system called GIFTS or the Guided Independent Focused Technical Studies. This has been something that in, in the past years has really been representative of what we do with people that are at this point in the school year. Is we've gone through our basic skills, and if you haven't heard me talk about gifts in the past, it's good for you to know. Uh, you're gonna work on something that is focused using the curriculum technology. I guess you could use the words passion project, okay? Uh, this is from last year when I, we were using Discord to connect because we had no opportunities uh, with things like Schoology conferences. That was the way that I was connecting with students was through Discord. Um, yeah, so there's a rubric here on your passion projects. And here's what I need you to do if you start this is give me a comment describing how you used your time in class, the two hours you plan it, you practice doing planning on Thursdays and reports on Wednesdays. That was to set up a habit. Like I planned to work on this badge and then I completed this much. Like I completed the whole thing or I only got halfway through it. Um, you know, so be clear, be complete. The rubric is there to kind of guide you on how much information I need. If you don't give me a comment, you're not earning any points. If you mark it complete at least to let me know you did something, I guess I could give you a point. But what I'm really looking for is get in the habit of reporting back what it is that you've been working on. That's going to benefit you in industry. That's a highly valued skill is your communication skills. And so you're going to see gifts week one, day two, day one, day two, day three, day four. It's an opportunity for you to be on a schedule because some people benefit from having a due date every day. And if you looked at the calendar, I believe I've got this set up so that those of you who benefit from a calendar, and this could be things like I've worked on my portfolio, I took one of the projects I always wished looked better, and I worked on it more. Um, so this is, this, is, this is really more cafeteria style. Pick your poison, I guess. Make sure you, you're working on something you're interested in. So if we look at the next couple of weeks, you're going to see that the GIFTS program is basically what is in place. Uh, 
that should go right up to the 25th, which is our last day of student attendance, but there's no assignments on these last days. In fact, after the 17th is pretty much when grades are going to be locked down for most of you because I'm going to continue to provide opportunities for you, but your schools generally are saying, we need your final grades because we need to verify for eligibility for graduation. We need to verify for that they've actually, you know, what how many credits they need to graduate if they're not graduating this year. So everybody's welcome. If your school hasn't finished, stay up until the 25th. Keep me advised on your progress. Keep me advised on your questions. I've been trying to pepper this information throughout different times of the day. And by doing it this way and recording it once, I can refer to it for everybody. Let me just double check myself here. On the stuff we've talked about. Our project grade updates. Yes, yes, yes. Return caps. Yes, yes. H drive, seniors. And then I can switch gears into that. So, um, I may not even make any changes in post, but I am going to stop recording the session. I'm going to stop recording this for a video, and I'm going to push it out. It'll be available for everybody. As I do that, I'm going to bounce this conference so that it gets processed behind the scenes and becomes available for people to watch. And uh, that's that. I mean, if you have questions, I can handle them live in a minute when I do a when, I, when we re regroup. But this is supposed to be a standalone set of content people watch on their own pace, and then ask questions through the channels of email, chat, remind.com, phone call, person-to-person. Uh, -person. Just let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll help you out the best I can. Thank you for your attention, and uh, this is a wrap.